Now that we've come to this part of the guest connection, I want to take some time with you to explain what it really looks like to become a part of this gospel-like family. And when I say that, I'm, I'm referring to right now you've had either significant interest in the church and right now you are just trying to discover what more can you learn about the congregation. Or it may be that you've already come to that decision, that you've learned enough and now you just want to know what does it mean for me to join with this church? Wherever you find yourself, I'm really grateful to take some time to just share with you what is this gospel light family all about? What does it look like to actually be a part of this church or even as a member of this church? And so my family and I have been blessed to be a part of the Gospel Light Baptist Church family since 2019. And we've been so blessed in so many different ways. And so I'm speaking to you not only as a member of the congregation, but I'm also speaking to you from the experience that comes with being one of the pastors of the church and, and also one of the members of the church. And so there are three things that I'll kind of give you as a focal point, And that is that Gospel Light, it is a place to believe. It's a place to become. And it's also a place to belong. Now, when I say it's a place to believe, I'm referring to the foundation of it all. And that is that it's a place to believe in salvation through Jesus Christ. That's what we as a church family have at the centerpiece of all that we do and say here. John 14, 6, we believe Jesus to say, as he says there, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So here we have a bunch of people from all kinds of walks of life and all kinds of different ages. But the one thing we have in common is that there's a point in time in our life where we believe the gospel, that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and then he rose again the third day. And that we've repented of our sin and placed our faith and trust in Christ. If you can look back in your life and remember a time of which you've put your faith and trust in Christ, then you would connect with this church family. If by chance you never have been saved by Jesus, we would love to visit with you more about that. We are a place of which we believe in the salvation through Christ, but we also believe in scriptural baptism. What I'm referring to is after somebody becomes a Christian, they get baptized. And so we believe in Romans 6 that Jesus teaches us there that we are buried with Christ through baptism into death, and that just as Jesus rose from the dead, we rise up out of the water, risen with new life in Christ. And so we, we believe in scriptural baptism, not sprinkling and things of that nature, but we believe in actual immersion, actually going under the water and coming out of the water as Jesus went down into the grave and came out of the grave. We believe that is the scriptural picture of the death and resurrection of Jesus. But we also, as a church family, believe in sound doctrine. And so that what I mean by that is in 2 Timothy 4, the scripture says there that the time would come in the future history of the church, as it would yet be, that people would not endure sound doctrine, but they would have itching ears, meaning they would heap up for themselves teachers and then be turned aside to different fables and myths and lies, false doctrine. So what we believe is that as a church that affiliates as a Southern Baptist church with the Southern Baptist Convention, we're pretty conservative and, and pretty solid and biblical in the sense that we believe just what the Bible teaches. And we don't preach and teach anything outside of what the Bible teaches. And so we are a congregation that believes that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven, that we are scripturally baptized and that we, ha we have the sound doctrine of God's word every Sunday so we can learn what it means to follow him. If you've not even been baptized yet and you need to be, that's something we can visit with you about as well. Or need to be scripturally baptized, we can visit with you about that as well. Not only is gospel life a place to believe, but it's also a place to become. And when I say become, I'm referring to some different understandings of what it is that we are becoming as a church family. And so the foundational portion of our connectivity to this church family is our belief that lays the foundation. And from that belief, we are becoming what we understand to be imitators of Jesus Christ. And as I said, salvation is only through him anyhow, but we really do believe that our whole goal here is not to be a country club, not to just be a place where we socialize or just do activities together. We really have at the deepest core of our being this desire that we want to imitate Jesus who saved us. We want to be like him. 
In Matthew 28, he teaches us to go into all the world and preach the gospel, make disciples, baptize them, and then teach them to observe all things he commanded us. So that's our goal. In imitating Jesus, we want to become more like a disciple of Jesus, not just a, a fan that just claps for Jesus and cheers for Jesus on Sundays. But we look forward to how we can be like Jesus even through the week. So as a disciple, we want to be a disciple that's learning from Jesus, according to Luke chapter 6. When Jesus says that a disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone who's perfectly trained will be like his teacher. So we're learning how to be like Jesus. But it's also as a disciple that is serving. And so we don't look at ourselves as a church family that we just want to sit around and let people serve us. Uh, we want to serve others. We want to find a way to give of ourselves and use our gifts and abilities to help the church family and to help others. So in Matthew 28, Jesus said the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. And so we believe in that. It's serving the Lord here at the church and not just soaking up sermons, but to get out there and say, hey, how can we help and, help and serve the church family? And also we believe in being a disciple that gives. Obviously, <clears throat> we come together as a church family to worship and a part of our worship is our giving. So being a member of this church is full of people who have the understanding that we give of our tithes and offerings, not because we have to, and it's not an, an obligation, or it's not even by force. It's because we want to give, because we believe in the gospel of Christ going through this ministry and doing things that build God's kingdom. Jesus even teaches us in Mark chapter 12, he says, render or give unto Caesar, the government of that time, the things that are Caesar's and to God, the things that are God's. Just as you and I in the same day and time give to Caesar or our government, such as our taxes, the IRS, that's one thing as we give and pay taxes. But as a church, we give our tithes and our offerings to further the ministry of God's kingdom. So we are believing that imitating Jesus involves a disciple that's learning how to be like Christ, serving like Christ, and even giving like Christ. Not only is gospel light a place to believe, and a place to become, but we believe also it's a place to belong. And what I'm referring to here is belonging to what we understand and call lighthouses, also known as small groups. And what I'm getting into is this. Here's the question. Why belong to a lighthouse instead of just going to Sunday services only? You know, wh why do we need to have that extra measure of connection to the church family instead of just sitting in church on Sundays. And I'm going to tell you uh, kind of a reason why. First of all, it's about connection. We get connected together as friends that laugh together. We learn together. We even hurt together. When we're in a Sunday morning gathering, we certainly get some of those things to a minimal level. But because it's a corporate gathering, it doesn't go near as deep as we can in a small group family where we can ask questions, where we can have people individually pray with us about things in our life. We need small group community and connectivity. And then there's also another reason, it's for spiritual growth. So in the Bible, believers grew in their relationship with Jesus, not isolated, but together they grew. All over and over again, they grew together as a community of believers. And then there's also the understanding of serving. As I mentioned earlier about serving as a part of how we imitate Jesus, well, we do that actually through our lighthouses. And what I'm referring to is that serving for gospel light is not limited, nor is it reduced to an announcement coming out on the pulpit from Sundays and then depending on the congregation to see if they can go serve and help a need. Even though that's still appropriate, what we do is we actually announce it to our small group lighthouses and they disperse the serving needs and a lot more gets accomplished. So what I want you to know is that serving the church employs our, our small group, our lighthouses to do outreaches and helps us serve together using our time and our talents and our resources for the purpose of sharing the gospel of Christ by meeting the needs of other people. And then there's also the understanding about our church ministry of what it is that you are uh, belonging to. You're belonging to a church family that has a family ministry focus. And what we focus on is we believe in establishing age-relevant teaching environments. And I love this about Gospel Light because we want to cover and reach all ages. So our, the church ministry literally is fashioned 
from zero baby infant with many lights in our nursery and toddlers area. Then we graduate up to our kids light, which is our children's ministry. And then we move on up to the next area of ministry, which is blow up 501. It's our teen youth ministry. And then we get into Ignite with our college and young adult ministry. And then from there, we've also got all of these lighthouses that flourish out of that as well. Not to mention Gospel Light Christian School, which is all the way from pre-K through 12th grade. So what we have here at this church ministry, it, it, it is an investment into the families that God brings here. And we believe in allowing us to partner with the parents so that they can help lead their children as we have godly Christian homes that wanna follow Christ. And also the church, in addition from that, in the family ministry focus, we also assist couples in building strong marriages. So if you're, if you're married and you are part of this church family, you get to be a part of two events per year that we do annually. We have a Valentine banquet every year, and then we have a marriage retreat, a couple's marriage retreat every year as well. And this is a part of the DNA behind Gospel Light and building strong families. So let me just tell you, if for any reason the Lord leads you to join the Gospel Light family, this is actually what you are joining. You're joining a place to believe, a place to become, and a place to belong to a church ministry and family that is on mission to love God and to love people with the gospel of Jesus Christ.